Hey, what's up? This is Dan from Alliance Contracting. In design, I'm going to give you some tips on how to use a Boss straight plow. This is the controller. It's pretty standard for every Boss plow hookup. This would plug in inside the cab. You have an on-off switch on top, and then the display would illuminate. This is a pretty simple one because it's just an 8-foot straight blade. You have your angle to the left, angle to the right, up, down. Then this will illuminate green in the middle, and if you hold the down button, for more than three seconds, it'll go into float mode. The LED will turn red. That allows the blade to float up and down. Then if you double tap that button, the blade will automatically raise up and stop. If you double tap it, it'll automatically lower to the ground and it'll be in the float position. If you look over here, we have the connections on the truck. You have the large connector, you have your power connector, and the same thing on the blade. Here's your power cord your control cord. So we're going to go over how to hook this up to the truck and follow the mounting instructions that are on the blade itself. Okay, you can see that the controller now has power. It's illuminated green in the center. So we'll hold this button here about three seconds, it turns red. We put the plow in float position. That'll allow us to attach it to the vehicle. Line up these grooves. There's two on one side, one on the other. They come into the plug straight with a firm but gentle motion so it locks on. If you're not careful, you can bend those pins. I always take these caps and connect them together while the plow is connected to the truck so you don't get salt and road grime in there and then when you go to plug in your electrical connections that grime transfers over. So we'll take this cap off here, this one here, one side's big, one side's little. They fit together, male and female style. We connect our caps. Alright, next thing you do is you're going to want to flip your connections to the on position here. One on this side, one on this side. Now our mount is lined up to the receivers on the plow. Simply hit this switch up and the plow is on. The last step you have to do, pick up your kick stand and we're good to go. Now that our plow is connected, you can see the light is back to green. We simply push up and the plow raises. Double tap down, down and float, double tap up goes up all by itself. Some of the older Boss plows don't have this feature, but usually any of the newer controllers that have the strap will have that feature. Next we're going to show you how to plow safely and properly. When plowing a lot or a driveway, you need to have a plan of attack. Where are you going to start? Where are you going to end? Time of day, visibility, traffic, all play factors on the game plan. For instance, you don't want to push snow from a parking lot out to the entranceway and have huge piles of snow stacked on each side of the approach or the driveway. When someone's going to pull out, they may not be able to see around the piles and it'll cause them to pull out in the traffic and possibly get in an accident. The other thing you have to keep in mind is you don't want to block drains, furnace vents, or anything that has to be kept clear. The other thing you want to keep in mind is when the snow pile melts, is it going to be melting and then refreezing across your parking lot? So I always try and push the snow to a low point corner out of the way. I don't pile snow by the road and you never plow snow across the road. In many states it's illegal. So when you're plowing, it's important to angle your blade. Typically on the first pass you can keep the blade straight such as this. But we're going to try and windrow some snow over to the right and make sequential passes. So you just simply hit the right button and the plow quickly angles to the right. General rule of thumb is if you have two inches of snow, you can use three quarters of the blade. If you have four inches of snow, you can use two thirds of the blade. If you have six inches or more of snow, you want to use half the blade. That is in regard to how aggressive you attack or bite off of the pile that you're trying to plow. So if there's more snow like we have here, 
I'm not going to grab a full blade width. I'm only going to take about half a blade width, which I'll show you next. As you can see, when I approached the snow pile, I let off the throttle of the vehicle and I let the weight of the plow with the snow in front of it start to slow me down. You never want to ram a snow pile. That's when you start breaking things or damaging curbs or landscape behind it. You gently want to ease into the pile, let off until you stop, and then you can raise your blade. Once you get good, you'll have the timing down to you where you start raising the blade as you're going into the pile and you stop without even having to use the brakes. Now, if you have to get up over a curb, you can stop, raise your blade up, and then give it a little bit more throttle and slowly inch the snow up the pile. That's a more gentle and safer way to get the snow stacked without ramming the pile. It's also important to remember when plowing, never exceed 10 miles an hour. I know sometimes when the snow is light and fluffy, it's very easy to do. You get cruising along, but then the snow will come up flying over the plow and onto your windshield. Or if you hit something, the plow may not be designed to take that hard of a hit. It's also important to get the properly sized plow for your truck. This is a half ton Dodge, so an eight foot straight blade is about the maximum you'd want to put on this. They also make a seven and a half foot Super Duty and a seven and a half foot Sport Duty, which is a light duty plow. Actually, it's a standard duty, and the Sport Duty is the lightest plow yet that's just above what they put on UTVs. The heavier the plow, the more wear and tear on the front of your truck. Most states require that you have a flashing beacon light on top of your truck for safety. Make sure you run it day or night and remember to turn it off when you're driving down the road. You see this snow here that spilled off the right side of the plow because the plow is angled to the right? This is called a snow windrow. What you're doing is pushing the snow from over here, angling the plow, therefore throws it over to the right with the forward momentum of the truck. You want to take smaller bites and deeper snow, as I was saying earlier, so those windrows will stay to the right side. If you take too big of a bite, you'll have snow spilling off both sides of the plow, and then you'll have to go back and clean those up separately, therefore plowing the lot two times. So it's important to know your equipment, know your lot, know the depth of the snow and know where you're going to put it so you can be as efficient as possible. Typically when I'm plowing it's snowing out obviously. Combined with the snow flying up over the plow getting on the windshield a lot of times I'll have the heat cranked up on high onto frost but then it gets really warm in the truck so then I usually plow with my window partially down for some cold fresh air or sometimes I have it all the way down. It's important to keep your windows clear for safety and visibility reasons. Alright, next we're going to discuss and show you how to take off the plow. It's essentially the reverse order of putting the plow on. Okay, the first thing we want to do is make sure our plow is in the float position. You can double tap that or hold it till it turns red. All right, now that the plow is in float position, first thing you want to do is put your kickstand down by pulling this detent. If it doesn't go into the hole all the way, that's fine because when you remove the plow from the truck, it'll find its position. So, as opposite of how we put it on, we flip these levers to the outward position. Take this toggle switch. We're going to put the plow up to release the pins and then lower it down. Now we can pull the toggle switch down to help the plow settle into its resting position. Now you disconnect the caps, unplug it, put your cap back in, and I always tuck the wires up here so they don't risk freezing to the ground. Caps back on your truck. Put that up there. That one's in, and that's all you got to do. Now you just simply back away, 
Now, if the plow follows the truck once it's disconnected, chances are you don't have the kickstand on the right height. So sometimes you'll have to take a board or have someone help lift up the headgear to get a different detent position on the kickstand. But generally, once you have your plow set up, if you put it on and take it off all in the same spot, it's generally a lot easier. And I recommend, you can't see it, but there's a concrete pad under here because if you park your plow on soft gravel, sometimes it'll sink in as the temperatures warm up and the gravel softens, and you could also risk freezing the plow to the ground. But other than that, that's everything you should need to know to have a safe and prosperous plowing season.